Hello, welcome to uh, another Patrick Ford tutorial. I'm back again, hopefully for another while longer before I go back to study. In today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to install Windows 98 or the 9X series in VirtualBox. Officially, VirtualBox does not support uh, 9X, Windows 9X operating systems, Windows 95, 98, ME. And that is because it's outdated, it's, it's probably more secure, it's insecure, but it does support the NT versions of Windows. So this is uh, VirtualBox, you can get it from VirtualBox.org. So we're going to start by creating a new virtual machine. And we're going to type in Windows 98, and see that I've already created the, um, the... Since I've already created the virtual machine before, I need to put the TUT at the end, but normally you don't. So just click next, and I will give it up to 128 because it'll give a much smoother experience when it comes to it. And just leave this as default. Uh, next, 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 and then that's fine. Right, so we need to go to settings before we start up our system. We need to go to audio and change it to sound blast to 16 we'll need to go to the display and disable enable 3d enable 2d this is not supported by windows uh, 9x everything else can be fine processor don't don't do anything else with these these can just be standard as default over here uh, we need a new floppy controller we need to click on choose disk, and I'll be providing a boot disk in the description. Uh, this is for Windows 98, so I'll be providing one in the description. Now you will need a valid copy of Windows 98 second edition, uh, a bootable disk. So this is just like a jump, it gets you from the BIOS to Windows 98 setup, and then you'll need to use the disk to get to the setup and install the operating system itself. So you're just going to click on OK and you're going to click on Start and the very first thing you're going to see is this. Oops, not that. Awkward. Right, so I made it, sorry about that, I made a ton of mistake. You actually need to uh, convert your Windows 98 second edition CD to an ISO. You can use Image Burn, although I do not need to. As I have ripped it about five years ago and I've got it on my NAS. But if you do, you can use a program called ImageBurn, I M G B U R N, and that will guide you through the process. If you do not have a 98 CD around, you can ask your friends, or, or I'm not going to tell you where to get it, but you can search the internet, although I do not recommend that you do that. But that's an option, of course. Now keep in mind that the, uh, sorry. Keep in mind that Windows 98 is out of support by Microsoft and you will not have any modern software for it. In fact, most web browsers don't even support it anymore, so it's basically only good for older applications or you want to fluff around with other stuff. So, uh, I'll just see, I'll just show you what I did. I went to storage and I um, mounted the ISO. So now when we click on start, it should work. And it will say Windows 98 CD-ROM setup menu. We need to click on boot from CD-ROM or selection two. And you'll need to uh, select option one, and then that will boot up into the uh, things into the setup. So just it'll go through all these drivers. And now you need to press enter. You need to click. You need to press configure on the allocated space and then go down to yes and press enter and you still need to boot from CD-ROM okay so okay so now it's going to reboot and yep so now it's formatting and don't worry it isn't actually formatting your actual hard drive it's formatting the virtual hard drive if that makes sense so now it's formatted you're going to press enter and it's going to check your thing you check your disk for any errors which there won't be and there'll be this so i'm going to click on continue and i will say setup's repairing so i'll just guide you through all the steps 
you need the product key yourself. I'm not going to include that. Otherwise, that will be pirating. So you can use another directory. Although you probably go the C colon Windows is fine. Checking for installed components. Checking for available disk space. And uh, you can choose custom if you want to include games, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to actually add web TV for Windows. Desktop themes, I want that. There, there we are. So now you can name your computer. I'm just going to name it Win Test. Work group can remain work group and description can be left blank. Yep, this is all fine. Next, uh, you can select your your country. I choose Australia because I'm in Australia. And now it'll copy all the stuff to your disk. So I'm going to pause the recording now because it takes around 10 minutes and I don't want to bore you then. So, see you in a moment. Alright, so once it's copied your files, uh, you'll see the user information but it will restart and you'll see the user information section you'll type your name my name is patrick and your company which in this case is na or you can just leave it blank depending on your preference so click on next and you'll need to accept the eula so click next and at this point you will need to uh, type in your uh, product key i'll be skipping ahead because I do not want any of you to read your my part key. And in the help section, it will give you a little bit more information, but I'm just going to be back in a moment. So I'll see you in a moment with the product key entered. All right, so now I've entered the product key. Uh, it will come up with this screen, so you just need to click on finish. And it will now initialize the database and we'll check for any plug and play devices and we'll find quite a lot but it will take a little while so i'll skip ahead and i'll come back if anything important happens see you in a minute all right so once it's restarted uh uh you can just leave this as it is because virtualbox actually sets the time so don't worry about the time zone it says and now it's going to configure through everything, so time zone control panel programs, Windows help, MS-DOS, testing up applications, and then the system settings will take a little while, and then I'll restart again, so I'll catch you back there. Okay, so it's just uh, configured our system settings, so it's going to restart now. Once your computer has booted, uh, after the system settings has been configured. Oops, something happened there. Alright, so I don't know what happened. I think my virtual machine crashed or something. But yeah, now we're back to normal. Don't worry if that little thing happens there. Uh, it's normal. It will happen for about 10 to 15 seconds. Then it will come up with this blue screen. Uh, a password is normally not necessary for the first. And it will say unknown device, and you'll need to click on cancel if any of them come up. Okay, so this is going to update the settings again. That shouldn't take long at all. The sound should work out of the box. If it doesn't, try installing it again. Uh, yeah, so you should pop up here. And this is basically Windows 98 installed, but I'm just going to I'm just going to close up. No, no, no. Okay. So, sorry about that. But now we need to install the display driver. So what we're going to do is we're going to press right control. And we're going to go to settings, we're going to go to storage, and we're going to go mount a new disk. And it will be in the description, the download of it. Should be in D, 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 D. No, no, no. Did I say it was a desktop? Yep. So it's uh, driver to ISO. I'm just going to cl click OK. And now it should be connected, I think. So now we need to install a display driver because if we, ma we maximise this here, 
it looks like this and that looks like something from the 1980s. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on start, settings, then we need to go to control panel. Then control panel should pop up. Um, now you're going to right click on, or you're going to double click on display, go to settings, go to advanced, go to adapter, go to change, go to next, go to display list, Go to next, select have disk, oh, oops. so we're going to click on browse and then we need to go and select the disk drive, I'm going to double click on here and then select the uni folder and click on ok, ok again, so this should be in the, uh, the address in there, so you can click on ok. And it will see this, it will see BB mini port, so just click on OK, next, and it will install. So you just click on finish, then apply, then close. And you'll need to reinstall the machine, so for your pl viewing pleasure, I'm going to leave it with some nice reminiscent Windows 98 music. Well, that was quick. No need for music then. We're going to click on OK, and... Okay, so, nothing changed, you said. Well, in, in case you haven't noticed, if we go to settings again and go to control panel, uh, display, uh, settings again, and now it's 256 colours, so it's way better than 4, for 2, uh, 13, 8, 13 bit or whatever it was before. So you can increase this, the, uh, uh, not too big. You can increase the screen area, and I would recommend around here, 124 by 728. Okay, so that, yep, so that's better. So you click on yes. Okay, and now you can just click on devices and oh, no view, switch to full screen. And now we've got a fully working, uh, fully working. Uh, Windows 98 with a good graphics driver, good sound, and I'm going to quickly show you how to get the internet working. So I'm going to click on connect to the internet, and this should happen. But we're not going to use MSN, so we're going to click on OK. Okay, so we're going to click on start. Sorry, we're going to click on my computer. We're going to go to the C drive, and we're going to go to Windows. Show files. Uh, media where is it? Okay, so once we've done that, well, so once we've got so. So I've got the driver installed finally, now I've got a very nice clean desktop, the sound is working, but now we need to get the network working, which is probably one of the most important things. We're going to go to Start, Programs, Accessories, Communi- oh, System Tools, and then you need to click on Welcome to Windows. And as much as I hate this annoying sound, well I like the music, I just don't like how it affects and um, invades the screen. I'm going to click on connect to the internet and that will open up the welcome to the internet connection win, win, wizard. You want to click select the third option, op, third option and you want to select I connect through a local area network and automatic detection and you need to select no here. I'll click next and click finish and as you can see the internet works except IE5 is a terrible old browser, although this seems to be a random error. Yep, so Google works fine. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. Uh, please comment if you have any issues, and be sure to come back again and see my other videos. Thank you very much. Goodbye.